Hey everybody, John from Beer, Bourbon, and Barbecue here, and I would like to thank you for joining me once again in my kitchen. Today we're going to be making, well, something a little bit different than we normally do. Would you like to guess what that is? Of course not! You have absolutely no idea what we're going to be making. But I'm going to give you this little bit of a hint. I scream, you scream, we all scream for... I scream! Oh. Enough said. <laughs> all I want to do is drink beer for breakfast. That's right, everybody. We're going to be making ice cream today, but not just any ice cream. Of course, we've got to do it up a little bit better than that. We're going to be making the Founders Brewing Backwoods Bastard Ice Cream. It's a no-churn ice cream. I'm going to make it twice. I'm going to make it once the way they suggested, with just whipping it up into stiff peaks and then freezing it until it gets hard. And then I'm going to probably make it again and put it in our ice cream churn. We have an ice cream churn. I think we're going to throw it on there. I may have to modify the recipe a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure yet. I think this might be too thick for the churn, but it's still going to be fun. If this turns out really good, and I'm sure it will, they wouldn't have put it on their website if it wasn't. And let's face it, it's backwards bastard. It's good no matter how you taste it. Um, then we're going to probably do a couple other really cool things with it. So uh, let's get started, shall we? All right, everybody, like I said, this is actually a really incredibly easy recipe to do. Uh, it starts out with one uh, pint of heavy whipping cream. You can actually buy them in one pint sections. So you can just pour this whole thing in there like that. No problem there. And then you have 14 ounces of sweetened condensed milk, which is some thick globulous yellowy gooey stuff, but we're going to put this again entire can in there. Um, really not that much measuring involved in this guy. The only amount of measuring you have to do is to pull out the the uh, quarter of a cup of the Backwoods Bastard, which we did last night. If you saw my little uh, cheater video I did last night, it uh, had me drinking the rest of this, and this is why. I had to pour a quarter of a cup of that out so it can um, kind of flatten a little bit so that we can... Uh, I guess so it doesn't bubble up when you go to mix it. You don't really want it to foam up that crazy. Now this recipe suggests that you can add uh, butterscotch chips in with that if you want optionally. Now my family doesn't really care for butterscotch, so but they all like uh, chocolate chips. And I have some leftover from the bourbon brownies, so we're going to add that in there. Uh, we're going to add it in towards the end though, so it doesn't uh, mess up with the, the mixing and everything. So now we're going to throw this puppy on the mix. And let all this stuff go for a spin. Until you get stiff peaks. We're gonna have to go on high for this one. I don't quite have stiff peaks on this. They're close, but I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna get any more air incorporated into that with this machine. It's nicely worked up. I think it'll be fine for what we're looking for. Let's give it a quick taste. Tastes excellent right now. That's gonna be really good when it's cooler. Let's take this thing out. Let's put our chocolate chips in. We want to fold these chips in gently. We don't want to really push out a lot of the air that we put into this mixture. I think this is good. That's good enough right here. We're going to leave it right like that. Okay, so I took it out of the regular mixing bowl and I put it into a, uh, a better dish that will fit into my freezer a little bit easier. But because fats have a tendency to want to absorb a lot of uh, smells and flavors that are mixed in already in your freezer and uh, you don't want this getting any kind of those nasty stale flavors. We're going to cover it with plastic and push it. I hate working with this stuff. It never seems to want to cooperate. It doesn't stick to anything but itself and dirty fingers. I like to press it right down on top just like this because that keeps the air from getting into there and it pushes out any air you may have already in there. 
this goes in the freezer and we wait until it's solid. Um, hopefully, maybe tomorrow, we'll be able to take a better look at it, okay? Cheers. Okay, everybody, how you doing? It has been a couple days, you can tell. Different day, because it's a different shirt, right? All right, anyway, um, just took this out of the freezer and it's pretty solid now, pretty hard. Um, I gotta say, I did try this the other night, whenever I first, uh, after a couple hours of it in the freezer, and it was kind of a soft serve consistency. It was really, really good then. Uh, now it's been in there for two days. It is solid frozen, and um, we're gonna try it out. It tastes much more like ice cream now. Um, it's very good. It's very cold, I'm gonna put it down. It's very good, but it has a different mouth feel than you, you're used to with standard ice cream. Now, it's the same recipe that you're going to use for any kind of no-churn ice cream. And the, the heavy whipping cream and everything that you put in there has it tasting a little bit more like a really, really thick and heavy uh, whipped cream. I think this is going to be really good to use for some of the other projects we have coming up. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and spin the, the second batch in the churn and let's see what happens. Let's, let's compare the two. That's going to actually have a, an, a real ice cream recipe. Now, this is no churn ice cream. It's very similar to all other no churn ice creams. The one thing I did leave out though in my previous video when I made this was the recipe calls for vanilla to be added in there, but I left the vanilla out mainly because I, I, I was out of vanilla and I didn't want to go back to the store. But I really kind of like the, the taste of the beer and I didn't want the vanilla to try to change that. So in the recipe for vanilla ice cream that I'm making now, I'm leaving the vanilla out of that as well and just flavoring it solely with the beer. Okay, so let's go on and uh, let's start that up and see how that turns out. Okay, so a standard vanilla ice cream is very simple to make. It's really just three quarters of a cup of white sugar, just plain granulated sugar, no problem at all. Two cups of half and half, which like I said, you can buy them already cartoned in that amount. Two cups of heavy whipping cream. And then that's the beer, the Backwoods Bastard that we're putting in. That's the rest of it. And this is gonna come together really quick. Uh, so I'm just gonna stir it by hand and blend it by hand. No reason to put a blender on this. We don't wanna incorporate it in air. We really just want this to be cold whenever we put it into the churn. So I'm gonna mix this up long enough to make sure that the sugar melts and uh, becomes part of the liquids instead of the solid state it's in now. The colder this is when it goes into the churn, the shorter thermal trip it has to take in order to freeze. So the ice crystals will form much smaller and it'll give you a better, more creamier ice cream in the end. So this looks like this is pretty close. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the freezer and while this is in the freezer, I'm gonna start assembling the churn and get that ready to go. Yep, good. Okay, so it's been about an hour. I probably can leave it in there a little bit longer and let it get a little bit colder, but to be honest, I have to start cooking dinner for the family and I need this bowl, so we're gonna go for it right now. Got my charm bowl, it's been in there for several days, so it's nice and cold. Put that on top. Put my dasher in. Put this thing down to the top of it. Get this one little bitty mix before we go and pour this right down the center. It should be able to take all of this with no problem. Excellent. Turn it on. Now this should churn for about 20 minutes. And once it's done in about 20 minutes, you'll see it starting to hold on to the side. After that 20 minutes, it'll be about a soft serve consistency, just like the other one was. We'll throw that in the freezer, let it solidify, and uh, and get nice and cold. The cool thing about it is, though, because it's in a churn and it's going to start freezing, we can actually taste this immediately afterwards. So we're going to get some really immediate results here in about 20 minutes. So uh, hopefully everything will come out, and hopefully it tastes good. Okay, so a lot has happened since you and I last spoke. Uh, the churn finished churning. It went for about 30 minutes until it got to a uh, consistency I wanted, and uh, I threw it in the chill chest. It's been in there for about an hour and a half. Let's pull it out and let's see how it looks. Almost dropped it. 
So this is what we got right here. See there, it's pretty solid. It's actually like a, um, it's like a thick soft serve, but over here on this side, it's more frozen right there. So, this has the same taste as the other ice cream, but still has that ice cream mouthfeel. The other one is a really good ice cream, but it tastes more like a uh, like a heavy whipped cream. Um, so we're keeping that one, and we're going to use that for a couple other ideas we have coming up. My daughter's got uh, something in the works, and we're going to use that in that recipe as well. But this ice cream right here is um, it's pretty good. Um, so good experiment. This would be fantastic on. Bur Give me one second. I'll be right back. What? Cooking is hard. That's better. So, as I was saying, this is a really good ice cream. And it tastes fantastic with the bourbon brownies we made in our last video. Strangely enough, my daughter and my wife both like the original no churn ice cream better than this one. My son and myself like the churned ice cream better. So I guess it comes down to just personal preference. I think I would use the no churn recipe for uh, a couple other things, which I'm not going to get into right now because we're saving this for some other videos. But um, they're both fantastic. Founders, uh, I love your beer. This is a great recipe. Thank you for putting it out there. Thank you for letting uh, us have that. Um, once again, I'd like to thank you for joining us here. I'd like to thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for sending me the recipes. We really enjoy reading them. I've got a whole bunch of them lined up now because people keep giving them to me. If you like what we do and you like our channel, make sure hit that subscribe button for us. Hit that like button and keep talking to us. We'd love to hear your comments. Thank you for joining us and have a great night.